and welcome to the Paulding County Board of Commissioners July 8, 2014 uh, work session. If you ever felt like there's a safer place to be in the world <laughs> in this room today, thank you guys for being here. Uh, appreciate what you did. You look good. I welcome all of our uh, guests and county officials. I'm trying to recognize people in the room. I see uh, uh, Bill Watson, uh, tax commissioner back there. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, James is not elected, but our tax appraiser is here. Uh, Doris, uh, David, Mira, Hirons here. Uh, am I missing anybody? Oh, the high sheriff. Back up. Uh, here you you will be tased. Yeah. <laughs> thank you all for being here. I'll remind you to turn off all the Nextel cell phones and pagers as it does interrupt, but if, if you're on 911 duty, it's okay because I thank you all. Uh, for our invitation, uh, invocation and pledge, we have Pastor Ron Cooper with the Rock. Uh, church, uh, so if you'll come to the lectern, uh, please, sir. Uh, and I'd like to note that uh, no one has signed up to uh, speak today on the agenda item. Uh, would you stand for stand with me in your right. Let us pray. Lord, we ask your hand of blessing upon this meeting. We ask that you guide and direct this meeting so that it is productive and that it is balanced. Lord, I pray that you bless those who are part of the decisions being made today with great wisdom and insight. May the decisions be balanced with integrity and trust of those who are represented by this board today. I pray your blessing upon all those who are in attendance today that they may see clearly the issues before them. And everything we give thanks, for this is the will of God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, under announcements, we have Sheriff Gary Gulledge would like to present uh, Deputy Randall Shilnut with the Medal of Valor. And also awards and letters of commendation to Deputy, Deputy Trent Tanchin, Deputy Trey Andrews, Deputy Stephen Tavelez, Deputy James Kement, and Deputy Hank Crow. Uh, would y'all come forward? And uh, uh, I guess we uh, have uh, Randall showing up first. We'll bring Randall up first. Let's right. do Randall first. Randall, you'll come up. Thank y'all for allowing us to take the time to do this. This is a, indeed an honor for me. Uh, this is Deputy Randall Shield. Uh, I'm going to read y'all a little thing about we're fishing Brazilian with the Medal of Battle, which is the highest honor that we put on any deputy we got. Uh, from the Pauley County Sheriff's Office, we've been all shielded. See, presents agreed. This is so much by the Sheriff of Collin County is authorized by the Executive Order awards the Medal of Valor to Deputy Randall Shieldell. Who distinguished himself in performance of outstanding service to the Collin County Sheriff's Office and assistance of Bonnet County. On 7 20, 2013, Deputy Shieldell was to the wooded, wooded area behind Echo Ridge Drive where Deputy's command Andrews were attempting to arrest a home invasion suspect. When Shieldell saw the aforementioned deputy struggling to arrest the suspect, he attempted to use his taser subdue him, which had no effect. After a struggle, Shilnut found himself lying on his back with the suspect on top of him. While struggling, the suspect tried to disarm him and Shilnut with his patrol rifle, which he had across his chest. And eventually, the bad guy just turned a round off. Then Shilnut then noticed that the rifle was pulling toward the empty stray Andrews. Feared that the suspect might discharge the rifle again, Shilnut drew his pistol from the ground and fired rounds at the suspect's back, directly pointed at himself. Uh, to preserve Deputy Andrews as well as his own life. This lingering distinctive accomplishment of Deputy Shilnut reflects great credit upon himself and the Palmer County Sheriff's Office. Thank <laughs> you. 
stories about eight thousand dogs and fat, so that's a fat dog. Uh, Do we have your family with you? Yes. Would y'all come forward? Go ahead, sir. Here for the whole family. Hey, baby, darling. Hey, bye. guys is to recognize you for the actions that you took on July 20, 2013 in a situation where you and several victims were attempting to arrest a vile home invasion suspect. This letter shall serve as an official letter of commendation for the selfless action statements of you this vile home invasion suspect. You responded to the wooded area 24 Echo Ridge Drive in Powder Springs in an attempt to locate the suspect. When you encountered him, a confrontation ensued. You along with all the deputies were put in harm's way and could have been subjected to death as a result of the confrontation. The suspect attempted, attempted to take Dickie's shot up a patrol rifle from him and subsequently fired off a round which would have which, which could have struck either one of y'all. I appreciate the fearless dedication you showed to the other deputies present as well as the citizens of Palmer County. Thank you for the job you do for the Sheriff's Office. This letter of commendation will be permanently placed in your personnel file and will reflect the exceptional job that you did on July the 20th, 2013. Thank you. 
this. I want to thank the public for always supporting us and my guys and what we do. Uh, we're here for y'all, and uh, anything we never do for you, feel free to call me at any time. A sheriff that cries when his men do their job is one bad thing. <laughs> Don't take it lightly. Thank you, Sheriff, for what all you do. Thank you. You guys are welcome to stay. I appreciate it. I got to go to work. At this time, I'd like to take the opportunity for Jason Phillips to give us an update on the uh, Supreme Court ruling. Commissioner, the chairman asked me, uh, this decision came in uh, last week, cases Avery versus the state of Georgia. Uh, it's known involving down as the airport bond case. Uh, a week ago, Monday, in a unanimous decision of the Georgia Supreme Court, the court upheld and affirmed the order of Chief Judge, Chief Superior Court Judge Tony Beavers validating the airport revenue bonds, which were tied to the expanded taxiway project. There were four grounds raised in the appeal, and as to those four grounds, the Georgia Supreme Court rejected the first ground, wherein the opponents argued that the intergovernmental agreement between Baldwin County and the airport authority was unenforceable. The Supreme Court rejected the second ground, where there was the argument that the bond provided an unconstitutional benefit to Silver Comet. And let's take a minute to read directly from the Supreme Court's opinion. The court said, contrary to Avery's characterization of the facts of this case, Paulding County and the Airport Authority have not extended a gratuity to Silver Comet. As discussed above, Paulding County's issuance of the bond creates a substantial benefit for the county, namely the presence and use of an airport which can accommodate commercial passenger flights. This is a direct benefit to the Airport Authority in Paulding County, and the fact that Silver Comet receives a secondary benefit as being the commercial airline servicing, excuse me, as being the commercial airline service renting part of the terminal and landing flights on the expanded taxiway does not change this result. Ground three of the appeal, the Supreme Court rejected the argument that the Dallas New Era legal advertisement for the validation hearing was insufficient. The Supreme Court found that the advertisement, although it did contain a Scrivener's area era, uh, error substantially complied with Georgia law regarding such notifications. And finally, the Georgia Supreme Court held that all matters affecting the validity of the bonds were done in compliance <coughs> with the Open Meetings Act during open meetings. So that is, uh, it's a six-judge decision. There was ju one judge that was not participating in the case, and it was unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, there's no invited guest. Uh, there will be awards reports from committees and departments. Uh, we have Scott Green, our DOT director, uh, with the road closure Willow Springs Road for bridge construction. Thank you. Uh, we have reached the point in this project uh, to replace the Willow Springs Road bridge that we need to go ahead and close the road so we can begin uh, regrading the, the new alignment. Uh, we're realigning the road at this location and we are bypassing the old wooden bridge. Um, also, um, in your packet, you'll notice that we have some pictures of the progress and uh, the condition of the old bridge and looking at the condition of the deck, uh, the wooden deck material. It's, it's beginning to show holes and it's going to become very expensive to continue to maintain it. So I think uh, this is a great time to go ahead and, and get the traffic off of the bridge so we can complete the work. The detour route is, is pretty convenient. Most of the people in this area travel away from the bridge site towards uh, Highway 278 in Dallas. Even though it is scheduled for a long period, we are going to close the road for about five months beginning next Monday because of the amount of work that has to be done here. We can't maintain traffic through the site. Uh, you notice in your pictures the bridge, uh, substructure is already built, the uh, beams have been set, and the contractor is basically on schedule at this point. There's some other, other information in there. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Well, we haven't been able to run a uh, ambulance or, or a school bus over this uh, bridge in quite some time. So, for convenience so through traffic, this is way overdue. It is. It's a little inconvenienced in the short period, but uh, today we're not running buses or, or large safety vehicles or any commercial 
type vehicle across this bridge site. So a little bit of uh, waiting here, and we'll be able to do that. And we, Thank we, you. Are, we are going to preserve the actual We're going to rob. Yes, sir. Not be used, right? This is the um, oldest bridge in, in the county. It's the only wooden bridge left in Baldwin County. So we're going to do our best to mothball it and preserve it for uh, future generations to look at so long as it remains intact. And uh, we're going to maintain minimal access to it, no vehicles, that kind of thing, but minimal access to take pictures or, or look at the bridge. I have a, another announcement I'd like to touch on. Okay. We've got a little time. Um, Georgia DOT is holding a public information meeting Thursday. It's an open house from 5 to 7, covering the current design of Highway 92 through Ohio. Uh, I think this is the second meeting they've held, and there'll be one formal um, public hearing remaining. It'll be held as they wrap up the environmental document. But this hearing is an update of the design. It's not a hearing per se. It's, it's an information open house where the public is invited to come attend and make comments on the design as it, as it is today. And uh, I think that we've heard about this project forever. This shows there is progress. The, the design is further along, and they're bringing it back to the public for comment. The meeting will be held at the new events place in Hiram across from Strickland Park. And you can drop in any time from 5 to 7 if you want to look at the plans and discuss the project with uh, Georgia TOT personnel. What time is the meeting again? It's, it's, a, it's open from 5 to 7, and you're welcome to, to attend at any point. I'm understanding there that it is that there are plans available at the district office up until the 21st of July. There, yeah, there's a further comment period. They'll um, for a couple more weeks, I guess. Uh, they'll they'll accept comment before they they um, close that comment period, and then you can also view plans. We typically have plans available in this office if that's inconvenient. Uh, somebody can ask us here at Parish. She's here today if, if they have a question. She can help them uh, find the information if they have if they uh, have any questions. But there's no briefing by you or any of the Georgia DOT folks at a certain time in that two-hour window. I don't believe there's any formal presentation. What they typically do is this: the informational meeting. Eric is here. There's no formal presentation. What they do is they present the current displays of the project design, the aerial photos, the the, the, the location of the project will be on exhibits around the room. And uh, citizens can come and look at the, um, the easels and the exhibits that they have there and then ask questions directly of the project people. personnel. The designers will be there that work for Georgia DOT and the right-of-way agents and those type of folks will be available if there are questions. I've, I've been there and those are pretty informal, but uh, there are people available to uh, direct questions to and uh, follow up uh, if you live on 92 and down property. That's correct. Any, anybody with interest in Highway 92 is welcome to attend and, and ask questions. Now, of course, it's fantastic. We don't have to pay anything, but how did that happen? On the uh, the meeting or the project itself? The project itself. Well, this this is uh, Highway 92 is, is a significant corridor, and it is a a uh, I would say a department priority as far as Georgia State. They're they're pursuing this road as a corridor. That's needed that it connects from uh, Douglas County to Cobb County, it connects two interstates. It's got a regional uh, importance of its own, and they're using regular fuel funding, fuel taxes that we pay at the pump to fund this project so that our, our money is not needed for this project. So that is good. Yeah, we're, we look forward to it moving forward and, and hopefully seeing it soon. Can you, uh, would you mind just giving us just a quick brief on any kind of paving that's going on or the idea? Projects. I'd be glad to. Uh, we have one of the largest paving contracts uh, out. Um, the work on the subdivisions that uh, we decided to pave has just wrapped up. Uh, we paved, I think, about 42 miles of roads around the county. We've, uh, I think, completed that last week. And uh, from what I've seen, they've done a very good job. I'm pleased with the contractor's work. Our personal have worked very hard to make sure we get the quality we need. And I've had uh, quite a few phone calls at our office, people that are happy to see that finally done. It's, it's been a, a maintenance headache to have to maintain these subdivisions in the meantime, a lot of drainage issues and things like that. So I know that's a big relief for those folks. Um, and as we wrap that up, we are, we're rolling right into the other paving contract, which is our, 
our higher speed roads. We have uh, the contractor moving in, I believe this week, on um, Mount Tabor Road. Um, they're actually just started wrapping up Morningside Drive, and then they'll be working on Friendship Church Road uh, the remainder of, of July. It should be finished up on time by <coughs> August 2nd or so. Thank you very much, and your Paul Department. We appreciate it. Uh, lastly, I know we have a lot of folks going to meetings this week that we've got going on. We have a transportation plan stakeholder meeting also happening on Thursday at the same time that the state is holding its hearing. Our meeting is going to be at Chattahoochee Tech, and that is for the technical committee and the stakeholder committee that is looking at our 20-year plan for, for transportation in Baldwin County. If anybody's wondering whether they should be at the events place or at Chattahoochee Tech, the, the meeting for the stakeholders. Committee members is at Chattahoochee Tech at the same time. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, no uh, vote of participation. Consent agenda. Um, there's two items. Uh, one, adopt the following job description classification for the Palmer County Fire Department uh, Division Chief, Fire Inspections Division Chief, Training Division Chief, Fire Administration Division Chief, Operations Battalion Chief, Captain, Fire Inspection. Firefighter 5, uh, Lieutenant, EMA, Deputy Director. Uh, Brian, is this pretty self-explanatory? Would you like to give us a couple words on that? Sure. It, this is a fairly routine item. Uh, it's basically trying to establish a little more structure with the uh, fire department organization. I guess we've probably got about 150 folks there full time. And uh, it's very consistent with what other, other departments do. Uh, Chief Irwin, you got a second to come forward. Uh, I, I know this helps you when you have chains of command and you have uh, these uh, opportunities for guys that have been here for quite, quite a while. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As you said, we've been in our department for 20 something years uh, from the ground up from volunteers. Uh, started out as firefighters. Uh, after a number of years, we went to shift work. 24 hours, number of people at these stations. After a while, we saw a need for lieutenants and captains, different supervision, and it's grown to the point now where we have split <coughs> county battalions, supervision, and basically this is realigning all their duties and responsibilities for the shift work that they do and the, and the leadership that they do. So it is basically pretty much set up like any fire department. Once you get to that size, the amount of area that they're covering and the responsibility of the division chiefs and the captains. You have a little help in this area with your fire advisory uh, group. They've got a benefit to you. Yes, sir. We've, we've been working with them for a number of years on our fire tax uh, budgets, uh, increases of, of salaries, things of this nature, real, realigning our organization. So they've been very beneficial to me in, in this the last year. Appreciate your help. Any questions? Yeah, this doesn't actually create, for lack of better words, new position. I mean, they, these uh, division chiefs are existing people Correct. now Correct. that are various. Correct. It refines their, it de defines their duties, responsibilities, and if you look at the organization charts, there's a number of people below them that supervise. Yeah, right. And it adds future positions. Correct. Below. In other words, a division, let's just say training, there's a division now. Started out with one man, and now we have like five men in there. So it is, it is an entire division, and they, they're responsible for that section of the, of the uh, fire department's businesses, training certifications. So it's, it's a big job. And there is one new, one uh, description there that is a new position that's been needed for quite a while, and it's the deputy EMA director. It's approved. I hope this be approved this budget. As you know, I'm the fire chief and the EMA director for the county, which is emergency management director responsible for GEMA. And it's very difficult as, as the fire chief and the EMA director to perform all the duties under EMA. And I propose the EMA deputy director that they can provide the functions and responsibilities that need to be provided for Paulding County under emergency management in, in case of a disaster. So they can do better planning to prepare the county. And in our chart, that's listed as what you're calling the EMA coordinator. Yes. No, 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 as a deputy director. We already have a EMF coordinator. And under the new, new job descriptions. Okay. 
but it's not yeah, part. They, of, it's, it's not a, part of the, the chart. No, no, it's not, not yet. It's not approved yet. No, it's not there. Yet. And there's a new job description for that. It's a very, very large responsibility. Does this take care of everybody that you're uh, working with right now? I mean, this aligns everything. Else? Pretty much, yes, sir. It takes care of our entire department and allows for future growth positions below them if, if it needed. It aligns everything. Else. It completes what we started last year with our pay grades and everything that we were working on. It completes that project. Thank you, Chair. Right, you Chair, if you don't mind coming back to the lectern. Uh, number two, approve the surplus of weapon model uh, 21SF serial number SWF598. Weapon will be presented to Deputy Kerry Grant. We have all kinds of celebrities. George Jones, Kerry Grant. Uh, we're, just, we're just blessed with celebrities but uh, presented to Deputy Kerry Grant upon his retirement as a token of appreciation for his faithful service to the Paul Sheriff's Office. And this is Paul again, this is something we, we try to do to honor them. Yes, sir, it's uh, something we started doing several years back. He last 10 years of service for more and they retired. Uh, we try to issue them for service weapons. Uh, thank you for the service they give to the county. Uh, Deputy Grant worked with the Sheriff's Office for 19 years. Uh, was an outstanding employee, had a new career. We'd like to give him his weapon as a kind of farewell and also so he can stay armed. It's kind of hard to separate a cop from his gun. It's just one of those things we like to do. I appreciate y'all go support that. Well, I messed up here. It's Gary, right? Gary, not right. Kerry. That's what I call him, it's Gary, too. You call him Gary? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think it's a nice gesture on our part. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank y'all for your consideration. <laughs> uh, would you like to move any of these items to regular session? There's no old business under new business discuss action to increase the agreement amount of Norfolk Southern Railway Company to $403,869.50 for the East Hiram Parkway project. Scott Brown. Although we opened the new loop around Hiram back in February, uh, we still have some closeout act activities that we're, uh, we're doing. Um, one of these is the agreements that uh, covered the inspection of the bridge construction when we built the new bridge over Norfolk Southern. Um, about nine months ago we brought you an increase uh, based on projections at that time and as we get into the final building with the railroad we're seeing that we're going to need just a little bit more money to wrap them up. So we need your approval for another $35,000 and uh, that should take care of it. you have any questions, I'd like to answer them. It's a one. This is a one-time fee, and this is what we pay the railroad. And our contract with them is basically whatever it costs them to do, whatever it is they do to protect the trains. We have to reimburse them for it. That, that's correct. The original agreement was based on actual cost billing, their labor, their overhead, their equipment, everything they spend. We have to pay them for based on their current billing rates. So when we did the original agreement. I think the billing um, estimates at that time were off. They're based on older data. And as we got into this project in more recent years, we found that their actual billing rates were a good bit higher. Um, the, the activity at the railroad site did take a little bit longer. And as you know from your backup, we we're recovering a chunk of that back from the contractor because of uh, delays in their own schedule. That ended up being passed on to us by the Now, our net cost was 226000 The railroad actually gave us 105 back, and then I think we charged the contractor 71000 Basically, that's right. Uh, we have not received the 105000 yet. That is based on the final billing being closed out, and then uh, we, we should receive that check actually this month. Thank you. Thank you. That's the conclusion of a regular business. There's no executive session. No citizen wishing to speak. Uh, I hear a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion. Second. Uh, discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you all for being here.